all this mess over an Edomite. Giving all praises to Yahweh by Shemel, Shai by And uh, this is sort of a response. As you can see, let me put this up raw. A response Gentiles are not Israelites. So, who were the Grecians? This is a video that was put up by Holy Bible Defenders. And he put in, in a video, he said that he was inspired to do this video based upon a video that I recently did dealing with the Gentiles. It says uh, on the top of this right here, Gentiles is a twofold word like many other English words. As a matter of fact, let me list, let you listen to a little of it. This is some black, fucked up in the head Christian. What is clearly written that I just read to you, some Hebrew Israelites and their eisegesis teach that Israelites can be Gentiles if they have lost their way of Abraham. Exactly, exactly. Scripture that comes to mind is uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12. Verse 1 and 2, where Paul refers to those Gentiles in Corinth as ye were Gentiles. And he called them brethren. Now, when he called them brethren, he was talking about kinfolk. You know, from the same line, the same lineage. See, what these Christians don't understand and I'm, t I'm talking, I'm focusing on you, Jakes. I'm not, t I'm not talking about you Edomites. I don't, give, I don't give a damn what you Edomites think. You're irrelevant as far as salvation is concerned. We're only dealing with the Jakes. And the Jakes, and this man obviously can't see it because he was trained by these uh, theological th seminaries, which I call cemeteries because they put you to sleep. They kill you. They, they make you dead. They bury you. They bury you, Jack. Inside joke. Anyway, so he's reading from uh, Genesis 10. Uh, it says uh, Genesis 10 and 5. Well, it says Genesis 10 and 4. And the sons of Javan, um, El Elisha and uh, Tarish, Ta Ta Tarshish, which is uh, considered Spain. Kittim, which today is uh, is an island south of uh, Italy uh, called um, Cyprus, but it was called Kittim. Little history on Kittim. Alexander was born on the island of Kittim, according to the history books and according to the, the scriptures, the Apocrypha. It says Genesis. 10 verse 5, by these were the, the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. So basically he's saying that the only Gentiles are the sons of Japheth. No, the Gentiles are every, everybody that's not an Israelite. But it also includes the lost Israelites. You were deemed as Gentiles by the Israelites that knew that they were Israelites. It speaks about the circumcision and the uncircumcision. When you go to the New Testament, which this individual uh, makes a reference to. Matter of fact, let me let, let you listen to a little bit more. But the Christ disagrees with that heresy. Let us look at it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying... Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Right, go not into the way of the Gentiles, is talking about the other nations. The Edomite Romans, or the Roman Edomites. The, uh, it mentioned the Samaritans, because the reason why he, he said, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Because these Gentiles in Samaria 
were descendants of the people that were put in the in the land of Samaria where Ephraim dwelt because Ephraim was was pulled out by uh the king of Assyria. So you gotta you gotta know the history. If you don't know the history, you can't figure out the mystery. And it's plain as day. If the if the most high has not opened up your eyes spiritually, you're not gonna see it. And you're gonna be led. And this and this individual right here, whether he's he sounds sincere in his voice, he's he's merely uh regurgitating what he learned and whatever theological uh cemetery that he was a part of. So you really can't argue with these people because they're gonna see things based on what they were taught by their master teachers, which are Edomites. So you notice that Esau, when you bring up Esau and who the Edomites are, they'll say, and, I, and I'm using uh, vocab, you know, as a, as a example, he immediately says, well, the Edomites are done away with. Because he doesn't, see, when you say something is that, well, they're done away with. We don't got to talk about them. When something is done away with, when, when something is, uh, ex extinct, an animal is extinct, there's not much you can talk on it. Like a person, we're talking about a person, let's say a person owes you money, that person owes you $5,000, and then he drives dead on you. Well, you can't, you got it, you lost some, you lost some money. Where are you going to get the money from? Where are you going to get the money from? That person is dead, so that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a dead conversation. So, what Vocab did, he said, uh, all oh, the Edomites are done away with. Why? So we won't have to talk about it. We won't have to really go into it because they're dead. Why talk about them? And that's what they do. That's what they do. So it says Matthews, Matthew 10, 5 and 6. It said these 12 G, the Lord sent forth and commanded them. And this is the Great Commission. Because they use uh, Matthew, uh, what is it, 28, verse 19, and they say that's the Great Commission. Well, the first Great Commission, the real commission, is, is, is right here in the 10th chapter. It says, uh, commanded them, saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. That, now, this word Gentile actually means the other nations, the heathens, the Romans, the Hamites the Ishmaelites, the people round about. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, because you had you had uh, people that were put in the land of Samaria where Ephraim was supposed to dwell, that was pulled out by uh, Shalomaneser, uh the fifth. And they didn't practice the law, statutes, and commandments, and the Mosai sent lions after them to slay some of them. So what they did was they took a priest from Israel, from among the Israelites, a Levitical priest, one priest, and he taught them the Lord's statutes and commandments. That's why you have groups of people that say that they're descendants of Israel, like in Ethiopia, the, peop the people of Cush, and certain surrounding areas that say that they practice the Lord's Statutes and commandments. Why? Because their their foreparents, their ancestors were being eaten by lions, and that's um, spoken of in um, Second uh, Kings, the seventeenth chapter. You can start at the twentieth verse and read down. So that's why the Lord said the Gentiles and the Samaritans. The um. When you go to St. John, the fourth chapter, the woman at the well, she was a Samaritan. She was a descendant of those people that the king of Assyria placed in the land of Samaria, Samaria or the Samaritan, they became Samaritans. Um, because like I said, I say it a third time, because the northern kingdom was uh, pulled out, out of the land. And Samaria, the tribe that dwelt mainly in Samaria, was the tribe of Ephraim. 
So what did the Lord tell tell her? He said, you know not uh, who you worship for salvation is of the Jews. He said, the hour cometh when the true worshipers shall worship. So what was he saying there? This is um, St. John 4 and around about the 20th verse. What, what, was, what was he saying there? He was saying that you, you are not a true worshiper. You are not a descendant of the true Israelites. So it's obvious that our Lord knew that history. Let's listen to a little bit more. So, we know that the strongest Greek number for Gentiles here is 1484, and it means a Gentile heathen nation, a foreigner, a non-Jew, okay? So Jesus said, go not into the Gentiles, the way of the Gentiles, verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel is called the lost sheep. All of Israel is called the lost sheep because all of Israel were lost. So there was no distinction in Israel, whereas... Not all of Israel were lost. Some of them, Nicodemus wasn't lost. He knew that that was the Messiah. The apostles that came together, which was, there was, uh, what was it, 84 of them, knew that that was the Messiah when they followed him. John the Baptist, John and I believe James, and if I'm not mistaken, Peter and Andrew, I know John and James were two of his disciples. After he got his head chopped off, they followed Yahweh Shai. But they can't. They started with, uh, you know, um, John the Baptist. So John the Baptist knew that he he wasn't lost. He he made a statement when the Lord wanted to be, um. Uh, what what is it? Uh, baptized. He said, "I baptize you. You should be baptizing me. I'm not worthy to let your your." Your your shoe your shoe your shoelace your shoe. So he said, "You're above me." So how did, why did he say that? Because he knew that was the Messiah. So he wasn't lost. John the Baptist wasn't lost. Our Lord's mother wasn't lost. Our Lord's two brothers, James. And Jude, they were not lost because they were disciples. He had four brothers. Two of them became a part of the twelve. A disciples that became apostles. Nicodemus wasn't lost. Simon, the man that the angel said, you will, you will not die unless you see the Messiah. And when he saw the Messiah as a baby, he was ready to go. Because he wasn't lost. He knew he was an Israelite. And he knew that baby was the Messiah. So what the hell are you talking about? Who else knew? There were a handful of people that knew. Who was that? Was that Zacharias? I believe that was Zacharias on a Daniel. Somebody could put in this thing in the uh, description, um, the comment section, that the Lord said uh, to him, he said, and behold, an Israelite indeed. And he said he wanted to, he's going to come to your house, come to his house to eat. And he said, whatever I took from people, I will restore for, fourfold. Somebody can put the precept in there. I'm not going to go to it. But he knew, he knew he was an Israelite and he knew that there was a Messiah. So there was a lot of people that knew that they were Israelites and that knew that they, that was a Messiah. So the people that he said to go to were the ones that didn't knew that they were Israelites but didn't know that the Messiah is on the scene or came on the scene. 
And a lot of them believed, a lot of the Pharisees believed, or some of the Pharisees believed. That's in Acts, the 15th chapter. Because they had a council of Paul, uh, what was that, Paul and, uh, I believe that was Barnabas at that time. Either Barnabas or Silas. It was uh, Acts, the 15th chapter, where they had what was called the Jerusalem Council, where they got together concerning these uh, Pharisees that said, you can't keep the Passover unless you be sacrificed, unless you be uh, uh, circumcised, excuse me. Now, the dis difference between the circumcision and the uncircumcision were the, is cir the circumcision were the Israelites that, that were born as Israelites, that had parents that were Israelites. And they, be, and they got circumcised on the eighth day. The uncircumcisions were Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites, whose ancestors or foreparents were a part of uh, the time of Maccabees, where you got just all you got to do is read uh, First Maccabees one whole chapter, and it tells you how Antiochus put out an order where you can't circumcise your children. If you did, we're going to kill you, woman, and we're going to hang your babies. So this is a cruel Edomite. And because this guy doesn't know, he's going to be lost. And if he doesn't wake up, if you, if you jakes, you so-called Negroes don't come out of that church, you're going, to, you're going to die to death. You're going to be destroyed. And most of you Christians will take that karagma. That's the main thing we should be talking about. So let me let, let you listen to a little bit more. And I'm going to show you something. Some were lost and some were not. Some lost the way of Abraham and some did not. They all did. They all were considered the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that kills that. Well, no. They were lost if they didn't know that the Messiah came. All right? The ones that the Pharisees, the wicked uh, scribes and Pharisees that, can't, that kept coming up against the Lord... They were lost, and they were they would they're gonna remain lost because the Lord didn't tell them. They asked straight out, "Are you the Messiah?" Tell us straight out, and the Lord didn't answer them because why? Because they wasn't supposed to receive it, and some knew, but didn't want to accept it because they would lose their seat under the Caesar at that time. You had Julius Caesar. You had a uh, uh, you had Augustus Caesar. You had Tiberius Caesar, which was during that time period when they took over the land. Like I said, I'm gonna say it again. If you don't, we made this famous this statement. If you don't know the history, you can't get the mystery. The mystery of the of the Gentiles are the Israelites, Cornelius. Is an Israelite. Now let me show you something. I'll probably come back to this. It says, Was Septimius Severius a black Roman emperor? Not a soldier, not council, not senate, not a centurion, but was he a black Roman emperor? And the answer is yes. And this is the original. Now, hold on. Let me come back. Let me come back. This is what this devil does. This is supposed to be a bust of uh, Septimius Severius. Which this bust came later in history. And he has kind of curly hair. He looks, he, he kind of passes for, he would pass for a so-called white man with a beard. What you got to understand, let me come back to this. Was Septimius Severius a black Roman? Now, Bishop Nate or Bishop Nathaniel, he'll go, he'll do his little shows, little things on YouTube by himself. And he'll go into certain books. 
And he'll mention um, that Sub Septimius Severius was the first Jake that became the Roman Empire, which is a damn lie. And we got it from was Yeshia, because those guys didn't do deep research. They touched the surface. Now, if you do deep research, Septimius Severius came in a line of so-called Israelite emperors way in the future. What was it 193 AD? Jake, Jake was ruling as far back as about 100 uh, AD. September Severus came on the scene in 190, 193 AD. I said BC. I meant to say AD. So there was a long line. And, it, and there was only 12 uh, emperors, Edomite emperors, from Julius to uh, the younger brother of uh, Titus. And I go into this. I know about, it's in my head, which was, um, uh, what's his name? A uh, uh, dam. Domitian. Domitian was the younger brother of Titus, which they both were the sons of Vespasian, who came out of a time period known as the year of the four Caesars or the year of the four emperors. If you go to Google and you put in the year of the four Caesars or the year of the four emperors, it's going to break down those four emperors. You had Galba, not necessarily in order. I believe uh, was Galba. Uh, what was the other one? Vitalis. Otho. Galba, Vitalis, and the fourth was Vespasian. And one of them, I think it was either it was either Galba or Ortho, and I hadn't gone to this history. That uh, and that's mentioned in um uh the book of uh Second Ezra the eleventh chapter and Second Ezra the uh twelfth chapter. It, it talks about in parabolic terms, so you can't just read it outright. It talks about, and I hadn't gone through that in a long, long time. And my was I don't know, maybe 2014 or so, maybe 2015. But we went into that. We did a video, but these video videos are lost forever. Now somebody asked me. Uh, can I do a breakdown on those two chapters? Well, I'll say this uh, in time. In time. Because it's not super important right now because those are prophecies that already took place. And mind you, none of these other camps, they don't understand. They, they can't go into, they can't break down uh, 2 Ezra 11 and 2 Ezra 12. You know why? Because the seven never taught him. And you know why the seven never taught him? Because they didn't know the breakdown. And you know how I know that? Because we had a meeting. Um, uh, Yohanna was there. General Yohanna. I believe Barack was there. And certain Ariel and certain other men with the seven. And they had a meeting for us to figure out what what uh, Second Ezra 11 and Second Ezra 12 is talking about. None of these guys even touch it because they because a lot of these guys, you know, whether they're sincere or not, and I believe a lot of them are sincere, they regurgitate what they learned from the seven. And the seven didn't have 100% truth. That's why Yeshai made the statement, Septimius Severus took, he, he was the first Jake to come into power. No, he was not. You remember you had the uh you had the uh the reign of the five what was it called the f I, I think it's called I think they were called the five good emperors or something like that and one of them was uh this guy uh damn he was the father of uh Commodus I can't even think of his name it'll come to me
It is Julius Maximus. Damn. I hate that. Like, I, I got to go back into that history. Um, Marcus Aurelius just came to me. Marcus Aurelius, if you watch the movie Gladiator, and I always use that as a reference, if you watch the movie Gladiator, the very beginning, they're at war uh, uh, with uh, the Germanic uh, tribes of the north. The opening scene, and it'll, it'll say, I believe it said, uh, Germanic war with the Germanic tribes, and then it says, uh, in the very beginning, the first, I would say, five minutes of the movie, and it will give you the year. The year was, I believe it was 180 or 180, it was 180 AD. So that, so we're talking 13 years before Septimius Severus came on the scene as an emperor. You had, you had this guy, Marcus Aurelius, and then you had his son, which the guy that, after he killed him, he, uh, he, uh, took, you know, took the throne, but I believe the emperor died of natural causes. I got to go back into the history. All right. I'm just going by memory. And, um, he, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, so to speak. His father was a, um, stoic, looked that up. And, and uh, his son was an Epicurean, meaning you like to live a luxurious life. Um, Marcus Aurelius lived a uh, disciplined life. And that's the best way to live, man. A disciplined life. So anyway, um, let me come over here. Now, this is the actual bus of... Uh, it says was, hope you can see it, was Septimius Severius a black Roman emperor? Tales of time forgotten. Now this is an actual bus, and this may look just like my superintendent. It may look just like my superintendent, man. You can see the, no look at the nose. They they chiseled off the nose, they chiseled chiseled part of the lips, but you can see he has kinky, woolly hair and he has a beard. But like I said, I, well I, I didn't say that, I'm gonna say this: the first uh, so-called Jake Roman Empire um, emperor was uh, was Nerva. And he came after uh, Domitian. So, you know, Bishop Nate Nathaniel, when you do your videos, you need to ch you know you need to change your you need to change up, bro. You know, stop just bur burting out, regurgitating what Yeshia said. Anyway, if you look right here, it says. Uh, the first Romans were black people called the Etruscans. Now, the Etruscans were not Israelites. They were Japhetic. Why? Because Japhet dwelt in those lands um, where Rome is today. Remember when you go back to Genesis, uh, uh, the 10th chapter, that the sons of Japhet, they... They were scattered throughout the different European islands and so forth. You know, um, like Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi was one of the sons of, uh, sons or relatives of uh, uh, Yavin, you know. But there you go. There you go. So you can't say, well... Uh, Cornelius was an Edomite because he said he was of the Italian band. Well, well, you had Jakes that were living up in Italy, man. As you can see. So now let's go back to this guy. 
So he doesn't understand the history. All he does, all his this guy knows how to do, this Christian, is regurgitate what he learned from whatever theological cemetery that he went to. Hey, look, vocab is so messed up in the head. I went to his page. The last time he put up a video was over a month, going on two months. He hadn't put up a video. He, 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 there's nothing he can do. He lost. He lost that battle. He gave up. He left the chessboard. False notion. It kills that heresy that Israelites were being known as Gentiles because they lost the way of Abraham. They all lost the way of Abraham. So, according to that false heresy... Now, I mentioned a bun bunch of people that didn't lo lose their way. Nicodemus, our Lord's mother... She, she knew that our Lord's mother and father knew that that was the Messiah because he was performing miracles as a child. In the history, in the history, why do you think she uh, asked her son to take water and turn it into wine? Because she already knew he had the spiritual power. And what he said, know, know ye not, woman, that this is not my hour? So she knew that that was the Messiah. Nicodemus knew that that was the Messiah. John the Baptist knew that that was Messiah. The 84 disciples knew that that was... Uh, and a lot of these Christians don't even know that he had 84 disciples. He had the 70. Then there were two that's written in the book of Acts. Uh, what was that? Matthias. Uh, damn, what's the other one? Joseph and Matthias. And they cast a lot to find out who will replace Judas Iscariot because Judas Iscariot portrayed the Lord and that was a fulfillment of prophecy. Um, that all of Israel were Gentiles. Acts chapter 11, verse 1, 2, and 3. And the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, 1384, meaning all nations of Gentiles, had also received no, 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 no. It was Cornelius. All right? It was Cornelius. Read read Acts 10 chapter and then go to Acts 11 chapter. The, the whole Acts 10 chapter was all about the one man, Cornelius, that was converted. Wasn't no whole company of people that was converted, but he was like a... He, he, he was a, a, the uh, ideologue, I guess I can call it. For the Gentiles coming in. See this guy probably thinks Timothy was a Greek. Timothy was an Israelite man. But his father did not accept the fact that he was an Israelite. But his mother did. The word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem. They that were of the circumcision contended with him. Saying. Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. So yeah, that's why Timothy wasn't circumcised, even though his mother knew she was an Israelite and believed in the Messiah that Paul spoke about about her and and her and her mother, Timothy's grandmother. And the reason why Timothy wasn't circumcised because his father didn't allow him to be circumcised. So you had some of them that became circumcised at an older age. See, you don't know you you one thing about you Christians, you don't understand you don't know the history. You don't know you don't understand what's going on. Anyway, with that, that's all I'm gonna say. It's on to the next one, Shalom.